Starting off our list of the top 10 most exciting Cardinals prospects for the 2024 season is left-handed pitcher Cooper Jerpy. The Cardinals have the best stable of young arms they've had in quite a while, and Jerpy is one of the highest ceiling pitchers in the system. With a funky delivery from the left side, he could eventually profile as a mid-rotation arm. The Cardinals selected the 22-year-old from Oregon State where he had absolutely dominated, leading all of NCAA in strikeouts, with the 22nd overall pick in the 2022 MLB draft. In 41 innings with Peoria in 2023, Jerpy recorded a 3.51 ERA and 51 strikeouts. Though he suffered a minor injury in May, he returned in September to make two healthy relief appearances. Now, the Cardinals expect to fully unleash him for the first time during the 2024 season. This season could define him as a prospect. Should he flourish, he could find himself sneaking into top 100 prospect lists to start next year, and maybe even into the Cardinals' plans. However, if he struggles, the Cardinals could consider moving him to the bullpen, as he'll turn 23 before the season and still hasn't reached the AA level. While this doesn't constitute a true make-or-break season, it's critical for Jerpy, and he's worth watching closely this year. Next on our list is the exciting Wan Bin Cho. Cho was signed as an international free agent in January of 2022. Born in South Korea, he moved to the United States at the age of 18 in an attempt to woo scouts from major league clubs. He also gained notoriety thanks to his large social media presence and his success at various showcases. He was viewed as one of the most exciting international free agents in his class. The Cardinals bit, and they're sure glad they did. In 2023, Cho's first full season in the system, he did not disappoint. Cho hit 270 and got on base at a 376 clip. He also swiped 32 bags and played excellent defense. Interestingly, the power that intrigued scouts has yet to really show up in games as Cho has been marked by patience with just eight career homers. However, that could change quickly. Cho registered encouraging exit velocities. He'll just need to begin launching the ball. Expect to see his power numbers increase in 2024. If all goes well, Cho could move quickly. Many, including the Newt News team, view him as a potential breakout candidate. We also have to talk about his defense. Though Cho could at some point be moved to a corner outfield spot, right now the Cardinals still seem interested in playing him in center, which again would be huge for his status as a prospect. Checking in at number eight is 2023 first rounder Chase Davis. Davis, who the Cardinals selected out of Arizona, is one of the most exciting power hitters in minor league baseball. He registered eye-popping exit velocities at Arizona, and though he has some swing and miss, he's improved his plate discipline significantly. He's a high floor, high ceiling prospect. Unlike some of the other power bats in the system, even if Davis underachieves, he should still be a productive hitter who won't totally bottom out. Basically, he's not completely defined by his swing and miss. He started slowly at the single A level, recording 34 strikeouts and 34 games with no homers, but we shouldn't put too much stock in that performance. 2024 will serve as the first real opportunity to see what he's capable of. It's also worth mentioning that Davis made it onto Baseball Prospectus's top 101 prospects list, though he did check in as number 101. As previously stated, Davis has a high ceiling and his left-handed swing has drawn comparisons to former Rocky slugger Carl Gonzalez. He was a great pick for the Cardinals, and we can't wait to watch him work through the system. The seventh player on our list is right-hander Max Radjic. Radjic, a sixth-round pick in 2022 out of UCLA, is coming off of a fabulous first full season in the minors. In 123 innings, Radjic compiled a 2.48 ERA and generated 123 strikeouts. In all of that time, he issued just 27 free passes. Radjic demonstrated fantastic stuff and advanced control, helping him to capture Cardinals minor league pitcher of the year honors. His heater now tops out at about about 95, an encouraging sign, and there's room for more. He pairs that with a great curveball, a strong changeup, and a solid slider. What's more, during an appearance on the Newt News podcast, Radjic revealed that he's now working on adding a cutter to the mix. In 2023, Radjic spent time at both the A and A advanced levels. With a strong spring, he could draw an aggressive assignment to double A Springfield. His outstanding season certainly put him on the Cardinals' radar, and it's going to be interesting to see how aggressively they promote him, and whether he competes with other established prospects for opportunities at the upper levels. 2024 is going to be a huge season for Max Radjic. Checking in at number six is Gordon Graceffo. Though Graceffo was selected out of Villanova less than three years ago in the 2021 draft, it feels like he's been in the system forever. He burst onto the scene in 2022, showcasing what may be the best fastball slider combination in the entire system. Many outside the organization believed he'd receive an opportunity to start at some point in 2023. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. The Cardinals, encouraged by what they'd seen the previous year, did hand Graceffo an aggressive assignment to start the season, AAA Memphis, but he struggled there. He generated fewer strikeouts, issued more more walks, and surrendered home runs at a higher rate than ever before. Graceffo also dealt with a number of injuries throughout the season, ultimately recording just 86 innings. However, 2024 represents a clean slate for the young righty. Graceffo should again begin the year in Memphis, and with an additional year of experience, I'd expect to see him excel. He's a high-ceiling arm with a solid fastball who could someday pitch at or near the front of the Cardinals' rotation. I think number two to three is reasonable expectation. I'd expect to see him reach the big leagues this year, though he may do so in the bullpen. Up next is Takoa Roby. He's the first of two prospects acquired in the Jordan Montgomery 
January Chris Stratton trade, which was finalized at the 2023 trade deadline. The Rangers selected Roby in the third round of the 2020 draft out of high school. He's now 22 and has worked his way into the upper levels of the minors. Roby has four pitches that each grade out above average, meaning he could slot into the middle of a strong rotation. His best offering is probably his fastball, but again, each of his pitches are likely to be effective. There remains a chance that he develops a true plus-plus offering, and that would elevate his stock considerably. He may have a homer issue, though as he refines his control, it's possible that he resolves that problem. Roby's main concern is his injury history. Though neither of his injuries, which have come in his elbow and his shoulder, both on his throwing arm, are particularly concerning, it's worth noting that they've hindered his development. He's missed significant time in two of the last three seasons. Since joining the Cardinals, he hasn't done too much. He finished rehabbing his shoulder late in the season and made four abbreviated but solid starts. Ignore the tough stretch in the fall league, it's not even worth digging into. Roby's goals for the 2023 season should include staying healthy and reaching AAA. Some evaluators have hinted at the possibility of reaching the big league club, but I'd recommend slightly tempering those expectations. It's more likely he reaches the MLB level sometime during the 2025 season. Coming in at number four is the top pitcher in the system, Tink Hens. Hens was taken by the Redbirds in the second round of what's shaping up to be a legendary 2020 draft. After selecting Hens right out of high school, the Cardinals exercised extreme caution with their prize prospect. Hens made just eight appearances in his first year before recording roughly 50 innings in his second year. Last year, his third in the minors, he topped out at 96 innings, an encouraging sign, though he was considerably less effective as the season wore on. He has by far the best pure stuff in the system. Hence, his fastball is outstanding, and it touches 99 at times. He might throw 100 miles an hour someday. He mixes in a sharp curveball with the potential to become a second plus-plus pitch, throw in a solid slider and a strong changeup, and you get one of the best individual pitch mixes in all of minor league baseball. Evaluators believe that Tink Hens could someday be a legitimate ace. To do so, he'll need to prove that he's more durable than he's been. He'll also need to maintain his velocity over longer starts. Regardless, he has the highest ceiling in the system. With that high ceiling comes a lower floor. Hence could plausibly find himself pitching out of the bullpen at some point. Should he struggle health-wise or wear down too quickly, the Cardinals could decide that his electric heater is best used in a relief role. Such an outcome would be disappointing, but he has the makings of an excellent closer too. After struggling with AA Springfield last season, I'd expect Hence to repeat the level. Hopefully we'll see him in Memphis before the year ends. And there remains an outside chance he reaches the big league level as a reliever, but that would really contradict the way the Cardinals have handled him thus far. We're down to our top three, and next up is Victor Scott, a center fielder selected in the fifth round of the 2022 draft. Scott's calling card is his blazing speed, which helped him swipe a minor league leading 94 bases last year. When he reaches the big leagues, he'll immediately become one of the most exciting players in St. Louis. Blink and you've missed it, he's already sliding into second. He is almost certainly the fastest player in the system. That speed also comes into play in the field. Scott is the organization's most capable center fielder, and he can provide a real answer at a position that's been in flux since the Bader trade in 2022. At his peak, expect to see him contending for gold gloves. He is a walking highlight reel. At the plate, Scott still holds his own. He hit 303 in 2023, including a 66 game stint at double A, where he hit an impressive 323. He's not just a slap hitter, though. Scott has quietly been adding power. He hit seven home runs in his first 66 games with Springfield, hinting at the possibility of a 15 homer season at the big league level. Maybe in his prime, he'll be able to push 20. His speed also comes into play here, though. Scott legs out infield singles and stretches gappers into doubles or triples. And on top of it all, he's disciplined. He doesn't have a ton of swing and miss, yet he still draws a considerable amount of walks, which, when you consider his speed on the base paths, is even more valuable. His glove, arm, and legs mean that even if he doesn't add more power, Scott will be a valuable player for St. Louis. He's more than capable of becoming a regular. At his best, he could resemble Tommy Edmond, a player who accrues value in a number of ways, though I think Scott has even more offensive potential than Edmond does. Scott has a legitimate shot to open 2024 with the Cardinals. A strong spring could seriously win him the center field job. However, it's most likely he'll go to Memphis as he's yet to play at the minors' top level. The second most exciting prospect to watch in 2024 is infielder Thomas Sejazi. Sejazi came to the Cardinals system along with Roby in the Montgomery Stratton trade. He also came from the same 2020 draft class. Sejazi enjoyed an awesome 2022 with the Rangers, mashing at the single A level before receiving a cup of coffee with Frisco, their double A affiliate. Then he started 2023 off strong and performed well in double A before the deadline. After joining Springfield, Sejazi turned it up yet another notch, registering a 1.065 OPS with 10 homers, 7 doubles, and 3 triples in just 33 games. He then moved up to AAA where he held his own. He captured AA Texas League MVP honors and was selected to numerous all-prospect teams. Now he has every opportunity to make the Cardinals roster. So Jay-Z will impact the big league club this year. He's an advanced hitter with the ability to hit to all fields. He's got power, discipline, a sure-handed swing. There's a little bit of swing and miss, but it won't define him as a hitter. He's best compared to Brendan Donovan, although he has significantly more power than Donovan does. He'll probably play all around the diamond, though he won't be utilized at short. I think Sejazi has the potential to be an every everyday player and should get plenty of opportunities in the near term. A strong spring could land him in St. Louis, but if the Cardinals decide to wait, it's likely due to roster concerns, not Sejazi's ability to perform. In such a scenario, expect to
to see him assigned to Memphis, where he's going to tear it up before earning a midseason call up. I can't wait to watch him play. And first on our list is none other than Mason Wynn. Wynn has been the top prospect in the system since Jordan Walker's graduation early last year. Like Scott, he has loud tools across the board. Wynn probably has the best arm of any prospect in any system around the league. He threw a 101 mile an hour missile across the infield in the Futures game. He's also a great runner with an outstanding glove at shortstop, a premium position. Though Wynn does have real shortcomings at the plate, he's improved enough to grade out as an above average hitter. 2022 was a huge year for Wynn as he added power and became more patient. Then we saw Wynn take yet another step forward in 2023. The 18 homers he smacked represented a career high and forecast potential 20 homer power in the bigs at some point. At the major league level, Wynn struggled, but the metrics paint an overly negative picture. Though he seemed overmatched at times, Wynn finished better than he started and maintained strong plate discipline throughout. He's going to be the starting shortstop in 2024. There's a chance he's set down for a brief reset, similarly to how Walker was handled in 2023, but the team doesn't have the same depth they had at Walker's position. Wynn is the shortstop, and the team's going to be relying on him in a big way. Wynn, like Scott, could solve a problem that's plagued the club for the better part of the last decade. He could be the best shortstop they've had since Hall of Famer Ozzie Smith retired in 1996. He's certainly the most talented shortstop to don the birds on the bat since Ozzie. What he'll do with all of that talent remains to be seen, but the ceiling's incredibly high and the future's incredibly bright. So that's our list of the 10 most exciting Cardinals prospects going into the 2024 season. Let us know what you think of our list below, and make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons on the way out, as it helps the channel a ton and allows us to keep creating fun videos like this along with our regular podcast episodes. We'll see you guys next time.